As we know, Talon components have configurable parameters to control how they behave. Take this simple job for example, consisting of three components. If we look at the configuration options for tsort row, we see that we can configure the sort criteria, which allows us to define how we want outgoing rows of data to be sorted. Other components, notably input and output components, have parameters that reference resources residing in the physical world. Let's look at tfile input delimited as an example. For this component, a critical parameter is the file name, which determines where this job extracts its data from. Notice the value currently defined is constant and will not change, because it's hard-coded. This is a quick way to specify this value, but it makes it challenging if you want your job to support multiple execution environments. For example, development versus production, where the input and output parameters may need to have different settings. In this case, it would be ideal if we could easily override such values prior to running the job. This is where contexts and context variables help us. We know that variables, as a programming construct, allow us to symbolically refer to a value, rather than hard-coding the value. Talon supports this capability through context variables. Here in the contexts tab, we'll create a new variable called input file. Let's set the value to match the original hard-coded value. With this variable defined, let's put it to use in our input component. Go back to the component tab and in the file name field for tfile input delimited, we'll replace the existing hard-coded value with a reference to the newly defined variable. A quick way to get a list of available variables is to press control space. Select input file from the list. And just like that, we've removed the hard-coded input file specification. The input file name can now be redefined in the contexts tab or in any execution environment where this job is deployed. With an understanding of how variables work, let's now take a look at contexts. Contexts provide a container for variables and allow us to easily redefine the values for an entire set through a single switch. Back in the contexts tab, let's define two new contexts, dev and prod. We can also choose the default context by selecting the appropriate checkbox. Click OK. Notice that the variable values are automatically duplicated for the two newly created contexts. Now let's differentiate these values for each context. We'll add subdirectories named dev and prod respectively. The changes we made effectively create a separate sandbox for each context on the file system. With a few simple changes to this job, we've made it possible to quickly override where its input comes from by selecting a dev or prod context. Using a similar approach to what we've seen, we could easily configure the job output and any other parameters we might need to override. One last thing to note, contexts and variables can also be defined in the repository so that they can easily be reused across jobs. Apart from the fact that you initiate the process in the repository, the method for defining contexts and variables is virtually identical to what we've just seen. Once the context group is established, the user interface in the last step is identical to the one in the contexts tab. To use variables from a context group, we just drag the group from the repository onto the designer or contexts view. Notice the variables now appear in the context view. Referencing the variables from a component is done the same way as before.